them all. <laughs> ah, you may be seated. Praise Jesus. Woo! Great job, Tim and Liz. Man, bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy Independence Day. I know it's not till Tuesday, but we're here today. Amen. And God is good. Woo. And he's faithful. So today we're going to continue in the book of Ephesians. I don't know how well you can see my slides up there, but we're going to leave the flag up for about a month. Okay, the month of July. So, yeah, amen. We're still in Ephesians in chapter 2, and the title of my message today is Unity in Christ. How many of you know we need unity? We need unity in the church. We need unity in our families. We need unity in our nation. We need unity, amen? And so I'm going to read out of Ephesians chapter 2, 11 through 18. If you would like to stand with me while we read this in honor of God's word, it's titled Oneness and Peace in Christ. Beginning at verse 11, do not forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now, everybody say, but now. But now. You've been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far from him, far from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled them groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and now, and peace to the Jews who were near him. Now, verse 18, all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Dear Heavenly Father, in this time of your word, I pray that, Lord, your peace and a spirit of unity would engulf every one of us, God. That, Lord, that we'd let go of all prejudice, Lord, and dissension in our hearts against races, God, that the peace of God would fill us today, that we could let go of things and let God arise. Lord, arise in our lives, scatter our enemy, and be with us this day in your word, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're so glad that you're all here today, amen. But how many of you ever... Think about what you were like before Jesus. <laughs> I, I hear some laughter out there. I mean, it's the kind of stuff we like to forget, you know, before, we'll just call it BC, before Christ, amen? And uh, I, I, you know, I, I think about the way I used to talk, the habits maybe that we had before Jesus, the things that we used to do before Jesus, the places we used to go before Jesus, you know, and uh, Delonda tells me things that I used to do and I don't even remember them. I'm like, there's no way, I would never do that. She's like, yeah, you did. I'm like, man, I'm so glad he set me free. He just wiped my memory. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. But Paul refers to us before we come to Christ as uncircumcised heathens, which refers that we were pagans. We were far from God, amen? That's what we were. But that's what we were born into. We're not, just because you get born, your mom and dad are Christians doesn't make you a Christian, right? 
I mean, just because you, you know, you're born into a Christian family, it doesn't automatically mean that you don't need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You still need to be born again and be transformed. Amen? Amen. The Jews thought that since they were circumcised, they were close to God. That's what the word tells us here. They thought they were close to God. But it was just an outward work. didn't have anything to do with their heart. Their heart wasn't changed. They were still mean. They were still honoring. They were still sinning. You know, when there's no transformation, there's, there's no encounter with God. It, it didn't make them godly to be circumcised. It just meant that they were Jews and they were given a list of laws that they ha had to follow. Now, we all know that they couldn't keep the law. They couldn't follow those rules and regulations. That's why Jesus had to come. Amen. Jesus came because we could not keep the law. We couldn't, we could not not sin. We're all sinners. Romans 3, 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So he sent Jesus to pay the price for us. That skipped a page. Whew. There we go. <laughs> I'm not, my, my iPad is not working today, so. But he sent Jesus to live that perfect life and to die on the cross so that when we come to Jesus, we can be, what, forgiven of all of our sins, right? And healed of all disease, and we can have that relationship with God now. Amen, we can have a relationship with God where we once were far away, now we're what? We're joined together, amen? We're united with Christ Jesus, amen? That's the beauty of it. We are united in Christ. And God's intent is that our heart be circumcised. Romans explains it better than I ever could. So I'm going to read you Romans chapter 2, verse 25 to 29, because it's just beautiful the way it talks about it. It says, the Jewish ceremony of circumcision has value only if you obey God's law. But if you don't obey God's law, you're no better off than an uncircumcised Gentile. And if the Gentile obey God's law, won't God declare them to be his own people? In fact, uncircumcised Gentiles who keep God's law will condemn you Jews who are circumcised and possess God's law, but don't obey it. Now here's key, verse 20. You're not a true Jew be just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you've gone through ceremony of circumcision. You're not a true Jew. So no, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Amen? A changed heart is what makes you a child of God. You can say all the prayers you want, but if you don't allow God to change your heart, you won't be a child of God. There's got to be a transformation that takes place. You know, I can remember the old things I used to do, but man, they are so far from me. I can tell you the things I used to do and you'll even look at me and you'll say, we just can't see you doing that because of the transformation. And that's what it needs to be. My sister, she, um, her boss told her he was a Christian. And she said, no, you're not. And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, well, my brother's a Christian. You're nothing like him. See, she's seen the transformation. She's seen what God did with me. She grew up with me. She knew how honorary I was. Even Delonda knows how honorary I was. And, and she grew up with me in the sense that we got married at 19. And she's seen a transformation in my life. Because that's what God will do if you let him. you got to come close to him. When we're, when we're talking about, hey, come close to God. I mean, bury your soul before God. I run, get down to this altar, fall on my face and just say, here I am. And let him give you a bath. Last Sunday we had water baptism. I heard some great testimonies. One lady said, I felt like I had barnacles on me. Barnacles of rejection, unforgiveness, and this and that. Just these barnacles. And she came and she got baptized. And when she woke up Monday morning, she said the barnacles were gone. They were gone. She was washed. She was cleansed. And then... 
Tanya, can I tell your story? <laughs> Tanya, she got baptized last Sunday. It's so great. Her son says, her son said this. Her son said, look at me, mommy. And she, she looks at him and, she, and he goes, do you know who I am? And she goes, yeah, you're, you know, what's your son's name? Julian. Julian. You're Julian. And she goes, why, why do you think I would forget your name? And he goes, because you're new. How old is Julian? 10? And he sees a newness in his mom to the point that he thinks she doesn't know my name anymore. <laughs> wow. That's transformation. That's what baptism does. That's what surrendering to Jesus does. That's what going all in. That's what pressing in. That's what grabbing a hold of Christ does. It's like you're a new person. Amen. Amen. To where your own kids go, Mommy, did you forget my name? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Mommy, did you forget my name? Do you know who I am? Because a 10 year old could see that his mom was changed. His mom was transformed, amen? A changed heart is what makes you a child of God, amen? And when we, we come and surrender by repenting of our sins, God does something inside of us. It's just supernatural. It's just, it's incredible what he does. Something happens and it's beautiful. And, and we never have to worry about what's gonna happen. What's going to happen if I come to Jesus? What's going to happen if I surrender all to Jesus? It, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be incredible. Your life will be transformed and renewed and changed. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know life could be this good. I didn't know I could have such peace. I didn't know I could experience such love. I didn't know that I could just walk in, in such freedom. I mean, when you come to Jesus, it's incredible. And Paul, he does a good job of summing up where we were. He says, you were, you were uncircumcised. And when I think of the uncircumcision, I think of my heart. My heart was not circumcised. It was not, it was not close to God. And, and then B, I was without Christ. We were without Jesus, amen? We were without him. We didn't know the peace. We didn't know the love. We were without him. And then C, we were aliens to Israel's blessings. You know, there's over 6,000 promises in the word of God for believers. But they were nothing to us. I, I've talked with people before that were not believers. And they look at me like I'm insane. Now, I might be, and that's okay. I'm good with that. But they look at me because they don't understand what the word of God says. They don't understand. They don't have that, that relationship with Jesus that they can receive those blessings. You know, but we go around and we say, I'm blessed. Amen. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. I don't walk under the curse. I'm blessed. And, and people look at you like you're crazy. It's so foreign to a non-believer that you're blessed. They're like, what does it mean to be blessed? I know God. We watched... I don't know what we were watching last night, but the guy said, oh, I know what it was. But it, the guy says, well, God spoke to me. And they were like, God spoke to you? Really? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Oh, it was Evan Almighty we were watching. And God told him to build the ark. You watched it too. <laughs> last night. <laughs> we're on the same page. And he's standing there before the Senate and they said, why are you building this ark? Why are you doing this? Well, God told me to. And then the laughter breaks out. See, people can't understand God told me to. Delon has even talked to family members that, that when she said, well, God told me to do this. And they're like, God speaks to you, really? Yeah. The little boy says, amen. <laughs> So you, you can't understand it until you receive it. And we're a stranger to the covenant. This is a blood covenant that we're under with Jesus Christ. But we don't understand it until we come. I mean, it's got to be the Holy Spirit that does the work to draw you to it. Amen. And then have it, we have no hope in God when we're not in Christ. Hope is, is lost. 
so many people today are without hope because they don't have Christ. I am so filled with hope. I don't worry about what the news is saying. I don't worry about what the world's doing. I am so filled with hope because I'm filled with who? Jesus! Amen. When you get filled with Jesus and you're in Christ, it doesn't matter what the world says, what the world's going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do. But I do know one thing. God's got us. Amen. God's in control. And then with, then lastly, before Christ, we were without God in this world. Being with God, having him live in me, his spirit fill me. It's just been an incredible. We die? Oh, there it is. You okay? It doesn't mean that we don't go through things, but it's all in how you go through things when you have Christ. You know, when I'm going through things, I'm not getting torn up. I'm not getting beat up. I'm not dying. I'm not crying. I'm praying. I'm seeking his face. Amen. I'm like we were today, just right here at this altar, just glorifying God. That's where I got to be. Otherwise, I, I would get torn up, beat up, thrown out. But when you're with God, in this world, life is different. Life is different. And let me tell you, if you could just go all in with God, you'll say, wow, I didn't know. But now, everybody say, but now, things can and should change when we come to Jesus. We've been going through, you know, what we have in Christ through the word these last few weeks through Ephesians, and we can begin to live a new life um, as a new creation, you're created new. You're not old. You're, you, you know, we talked last week about that new birth we have in Christ Jesus. It's, it's a spiritual birth. Your spirit man comes alive. And that's the beauty of it in Jesus. And then in verse 14, it says, peace. Everybody say peace. Peace, peace he brought to us. Peace, peace. God bless you. Peace. Amen. He united us with the Jews so that we're now one people. So now, as a people of God, we're united. We're united. We should live in unity, amen, together here on this earth as the body of Christ. We should not be fighting amongst ourselves. <clears throat> Maybe say that again. We should not be fighting amongst ourselves. Yeah. Amen. We should not. So that as a people of God, we're united. We should live in unity together here on earth as part of the body of Christ. Amen. We should be united. And let me tell you this. Unity in the church is a challenge. One... Unfortunately, we all make mistakes. And, and with that, we don't make room for people's mistakes. But is there anybody here perfect? None of us are. So we all make mistakes and we got to allow for that. Not that, you know, I leave the toilet seat up often. Now, I said, well, if, <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> I'm telling on myself, not on you. I'm telling on myself, okay? But, and, I, and, I, and she'll go in there and she'll, she'll do a shout out to me. And I said, oh, sorry. And that's, that's, my, that's my thing, Jake. I say, sorry. I always say sorry. She says, you're not really sorry if you leave it up all the time. Why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> now you made me forget what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, we all make mistakes. And I say, I'm sorry. And I say, I'm sorry. But she's right. If I was really sorry, I wouldn't do it anymore. I don't know. All the women were saying, amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you, you ladies, come on now. So, you know, we all make mistakes and we, we need to... We need to use the same grace that God has extended to us. Not so that we can continue to sin, because as we talked about last week, should we continue to sin so that grace can abound? Certainly not. 
We shouldn't. So we, there needs to be that transformation. And then so one, we all make mistakes. Two, I hate to say this about the church, but we have a tough time forgiving. We hold on to things, which when we hold on to unforgiveness, we're not forgiven. And I don't think the church realizes that you're not forgiven of your sins when you don't forgive. You have to forgive people their trespasses. You have to, absolutely have to. I'll talk to you back here. You have to. You guys wake up, I'll talk faster. You have to forgive. If you don't forgive, listen, unforgiveness does this. You don't get your sins forgiven. And then number two, it opens the door for you to be tormented. So that you say, when you don't forgive, when you hold on to it, you say, devil, come and torment me. I'm okay with that. Come and torment me. And you say, I, it's better than me forgiving them. Just come torment me. I'll, I'll take what you have, devil. I just don't want to forgive. That's what happens. People don't realize it. Read Matthew 18. When you don't forgive, you say, devil, beat me up. And then people go around going, I don't know why all this bad stuff's happening to me. Well, if you just forgive. Thank you for that amen in the back. I know I'm stepping on your toes, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. Unity is hard. It's something that you got to fight for. You got to contend for have unity, unity in your family, right, Bobby? To have unity in your family, you got to forgive, right? You got unity in your family. You got to, you got to have grace for each other. I know that Delana and I would have been divorced a long time ago if she didn't have a lot of grace for me. A long time ago. You got, we got to have it. We got to have that forgiveness. I hurt Delanda's feelings really bad one time. Pastor Emil, welcome today with us. But I, I hurt Delanda really bad one time. I said something stupid. <laughs> I'm going to talk to somebody else. <laughs> he says only one time? Well, <laughs> don't, 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 don't even go there. <laughs> I'm going to come and talk to the girls. So I, I said something one time to the, and I really hurt her feelings. That was on Monday. So we sinned and we went to bed mad at each other. And I got up, snuck out the next morning. I went to work all day. I came home. We had dinner. It was very cordial, very casual, no no nothing, no talking about Monday. Went to bed, got up Wednesday, went to work and she calls me. She says, you know, you didn't bring up what you said on Monday night. I said, yeah, I, I was no way I would bring that up again. <laughs> She goes, that's the kind of stuff that we get divorced over. I'm like, whoa, I mean, this just got, this got real. And I knew it was bad. And so I, 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 I don't know what to do, Jake. I mean, this is like, I was the pastor. I, I still am, but I mean, I was pastoring. She says, uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I said, okay. She goes, I'm gonna act like it never happened. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, I'm gonna totally forgive you. It's done, it's over. And I'm like, really? She goes, yeah, it's over. Thank you. By Friday, we couldn't remember what I said. We still can't remember what I said. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but that's the power of the grace and the forgiveness as we walk in it. But that's what God has given to each one of us. Because he goes, he goes I don't remember what you did. 
because it's under the blood. It's like when we come, it's as white as your grandma's shirt. Your, your sins are just, they're non-existent because when you come to Jesus and you repent and he forgives you, it's like, it never happened. You're new. And so here we are today in Christ Jesus, new, amen? It's a beautiful thing. He doesn't remember anymore those things that we did. And he comes and he asks us to be united. So it's tough. Number two, it's all tough if we have a tough time forgiving. Unity is tough when we say it's just easier to walk away. It's just easier to walk away. So we got to fight for unity. How would you like your quarrel to be written in history that you could get along with another church member? How would you like that? Remember that, Mark? How would you like it, Mark, if you and me had an argument and then they wrote it in the Bible for everybody to read about? Wouldn't that be just peachy? That's what happened. These two, two people you, in, in Philippians 4, he says, I appeal to you, Odia and Syntyche, please. Everybody say, please. please. Because you belong to the Lord, it's very important because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my coworkers whose names are written in the book of life. Listen, unity is something we need to contend for. We've got to fight for it in the body of Christ. We can't be saying bad stuff about each other, amen? And I think Jesus would be so upset to see how ununited the church is right now. Do you know that there are 45,000 denominations now? I mean, I think back in the 2000s, I only got 36,000. So it's still, the division is still happening. The followers of Jesus span the globe, but the global body of more than 2 billion Christians is separated into 45,000 denominations. Can you believe that? I mean, you got your Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, Apostolic, Methodist, the list goes on. You know, the list goes on in the sense that there's like a whole bunch of Baptists, there's a whole bunch of different Presbyterian, whole bunch of uh, Lutherans, Pentecostals, all different kinds because people get mad about something and they go off and they start their own. Division, division in the body of Christ. And he's saying, hey, because of what I did, there should be no divisions among you. You should you be united. And so you, you got to fight for unity, amen, in the body of Christ. And it's tough because people, we say dumb things sometimes. And Jesus, he calls us one. But yet we're separated by so many. I, I have a friend I, I saw yesterday and, and he has a, a I guess a, a, like a funeral home, but he does all his... Um, he does all his funerals at a Lutheran church that's closed down. And so he, does, they, he rents it for all his services for funerals. And so he thought, well, since I'm paying the rent, I should do a Sunday service. And so he, he told him, hey, you know, I'd like to start doing a Sunday service since I'm already got the building. And they said, okay, that's great, but you have to, you would have to adhere to our policies. And he said, well, what's that? And they said, you can't speak bad about gay people. You, you can't speak against homosexuality. You have to just love them and you can't talk bad. You can't say that they're going to hell. And he goes, so I can't preach the Bible. So he's not doing it. He's not gonna do it. See, Jesus calls us to be one, but yet we're so divided in the church. We're very divided. People get hurt, 
they leave. There's no fight to keep the unity of the faith. We've got to get back to that. We've got to fight for our unity. We got to stand on the word of God. Amen. And Paul plead, pleads with us. He comes from because, remember, because you belong to the Lord. That's why. Because you belong to the Lord. Even our nation, we're supposed to be united. Tim, you said it, one nation under God, indivisible. We've strayed far away from that and what it means to be united, the United States of America. In his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. It just means we have to get back to the basics of the word of God and contend for unity in the church, amen? We gotta become forgiving and loving and kind again, amen? It will take a move of God like never before to make that happen, amen? It'll take us as the people of God pressing into the Lord, coming to this altar and crying out to God and trusting God to do a supernatural work in our hearts and in our minds so that we're number one, we're not prejudiced against people, amen? We can't be prejudiced. We're no longer Jews nor Greeks. We can't, we're no longer male nor female. We are children of the most high God. We've got to stand upon that. We can't keep taking this church life casual. There's a battle being fought in the heavens right now. Are you going to engage? I told you last week, we're praying for families on Wednesday night. I thought more people would come, less people came. I thought, oh man, we're praying for families. We're praying, we're praying. We give thanks. We give thanks for a half an hour on Wednesday night. That's all we did for a half hour. We gave thanks to the Lord. And then we went to that people, our families would have a knowledge of who God is. We prayed that for the next 20 minutes. And then we prayed for the sick. We anointed them with oil. We laid hands on them. We believed for their miracle. See, that's what we're doing on Wednesday night. And this week we're gonna pray that the eyes of our family, the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened. How many of you got lost family members? But are you willing to go to war? Yes. We can't just sit back and say, well, we'll see. Man, I'm willing to fight. And I'm not talking about this way. I'm talking about on my knees on this altar, fighting and contending for our families, amen? We got to break down those walls of hostility that separate us. We got to get back to the unity in the church. Amen. It's going to take that move of God. So as, as this is going on, the church needs to walk in unity like never before. We need to a be humble. Do you see it? Be humble. B be forgiving. Be forgiving. C be giving. Amen. Give to the Lord. Give to people. Be loving. Be kind. Be compassionate. Be united. And be prayer warriors. Amen. That's us. That's what we need to look like. We need to walk in such humility that pride doesn't have a place to get in because it's pride that separates us. It's pride that makes us not forgive people. We got to kill that pride. And the only way to do it is with humility. Humble ourselves before God and forgive people like never before. Forgive, forgive, forgive. I mean, I've been hurt by people really bad. I have people talk about me all the time. And for some reason, after they're done talking about me, they come and repent. And I'm like, I really don't care what you say about me. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus. You can tear me up, chew me up, spit me out. I'm not worried. I have Jesus, amen. amen. Be giving, be that giving person, be that loving person. Extend that hand to help people. Be kind, compassionate. That's how we're gonna to get to where we're united. And the warrior in you will come out as you start praying, amen. We need to pray like never before. I'm sure them hot dogs and hamburgers are almost done right now, hallelujah. 
I could go on and on and on and on, but I'm not gonna. I heard that amen over there. <laughs> but I know this, attack against your family is real. The enemy wants division in our families and prayer is powerful and we need to stand together for it, amen. We need to come and humble ourselves before God because he's the answer. One hour for our families, putting the enemy to flight, amen. Being united with Christ. I'm gonna stop right there. I know we got a lot. I got more. I'm just... You get it? Yes. Yes. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. Yes, I'm not a deep. You're such a good, good father to us. And Lord, you sent your word to us, to heal us. Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent the word to heal you. And we know, Lord, that you are the word and you have come to heal us. Your word declared today that you've come to give us peace. And maybe today you, you need healing, you need peace. There's just things that have been going on in your life and it's been a, a trying time. If you need healing or peace, I want you to just stand to your feet right now. You need healing in your body or peace right now, just stand up. Come on, don't be afraid. This is God's calling you out right now. Miss Betty, you're healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're healed. I wasn't sure to call you out today about healing. It's just something the Lord was speaking to me about today. But in the name of Jesus, it's done. It's done. But Father, you see us all right here before you. We need that peace, God. We need that healing, Father, in our lives. And I pray, God, that your supernatural peace <laughs> just rain down right now. Just let it be poured out. Let it rain down on the people right now. And that supernatural healing, Father, that you sent your word to bring to us, that healing, the healing power of the blood of Jesus right now. Just touch every body that needs healing in the name of Jesus. Just let it flow right now, Lord. Right in people's knees right now, God. In their backs, their head, Lord. Their elbows, Lord, right now, even their teeth. Take that pain out, Father. Let the loving hand of God be upon his people today. And let them experience your peace, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Now listen, I got one announcement for you. We can clap, let's do it good, huh? Yeah. I think the blood drive guy is right there. He is, he's right there in the foyer. I see him, he's waving at me. So you can sign up for the blood drive, which is this Thursday from 10 to four. We just need a pint. <laughs> Come on, Jake, just a pint, just a pint. And listen, one pint will save three lives, okay? That's my only announcement to you today. Sign up and give blood. And then, Father, I pray that you bless this food to nourish our bodies. Lord, that we just have a great time of feasting together and celebrating who you are. Lord, let it be safe and fun. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You, no, is, is Mario, Delanda wants to say something. Go. Okay, so 
the fellowship hall in the nice cool air condition is all set up with the tables and chairs and so we're going to be eating in there so just give the spanish ministry a moment to well, dismiss they should be ready. if they're we, not we're, we're really and late. just say hi and hug somebody and and then head over there and we'll get the food out to you as fast as we can amen and let the party begin amen